Thanks, everyone. Welcome for joining this session as 210. So I'll just go ahead and start. Um, our session is about the multi cluster GitOps application del delivery, and it's about the integration between Argo CD, pool model, and OCM's hub and spoke pattern. So hopefully, you are attracted by the Argo CD pool model portion, and uh, we will go ahead and discuss them in more details. So before diving in, I do want to give a quick um, update about ourselves. So my name is Maggie Chen. I am from the Open Cluster Management Application Lifecycle Squad. Um, our OCM project focuses on a lot of components, and we are uh, mostly working on the application deployments. So I am a full stack software engineer. I work on both the UI portion as well as the backend portion. But today, I will be focusing mostly on the backend. And Xiang Jin is our team lead. Um, and he is a principal software engineer, and we work on the same project. If you are interested in our code base, feel free to check our work GitHub pages. It's listed here. Um, we also have our LinkedIn profile linked um, in the schedule, so feel free to connect us on LinkedIn. So you may wonder, what is OCM? OCM stands for Open Cluster Management. It is a um, CN CF sandbox project, so um, you know, community approved, hopefully. And it is multi-cluster, multi-cloud Kubernetes cluster management um, so that you can deploy application policies and stuff to your managed cluster um, in a scalable environment. So we are using the hub and spoke architecture, which I'm going to show you the diagram shortly. Lastly, with OCM, you will be able to um, get a centralized view of your entire fleet. Um, so on this diagram, and this is our hub and spoke pattern. You can see on the hub cluster, we have the placement resources that's going to deploy placement decision. So placement decision is going to bind cluster sets. So that way you are able to select a set of clusters to deploy your application or policies to. Um, placement itself has predicate so that you can perform label selector or um, claim selector. And in the prioritize, you can see uh, how many of clusters are actually selected. So on the top right, we have a YAML template that shows the placement decision. Uh, you can see I'm using the cluster set called global. With OCM, you will get a default global cluster set that's going to select all managed clusters uh, that you got. So you can narrow that down to just using a label selection. So saying, um, I only care about cloud on Amazon. So you can do cloud in Amazon or uh, any other provider connections. Another resource that I briefly covered is the managed cluster. So you can perform OC get managed cluster or kubectl get managed cluster, whether you are using OpenShift or not. So that way you can get a list of managed cluster that are specified to certain cloud providers. Um, so as of today, Argo CD mostly just use push model, which is quite simple. On your hub cluster, you get your Argo CD operator and it's going to create an application set that generates a set of applications. So um, Argo CD's application controller will then connect to the remote cluster and um, deploy the resources from the application to the remote clusters. So it's just like one way from the hub to the managed clusters. Um, what we are proposing and which is currently merged by the Argo CD community is the pool model. So you can see that aside from the Argo CD icon, we now have the OCM icon, which is the purple-ish cloud thing. Um, so we now interact uh, in between the Argo CD hub and managed clusters. So same thing on the hub cluster, you still have the Argo CD operator, and it's going to generate the applications. But instead of connecting to the managed cluster and deploy resources directly, um, our OCM propagation controller actually um, see those applications and they're going to create manifest work objects wrapping the application objects as payload. And our um, agent on the managed cluster is going to see them and pull the application from the hub to the managed cluster. So as you, call it, as you recall in the previous slide, there's no applications on the managed cluster. But now um, we have each application on each managed cluster. Um, one prerequisite for that is you need to install the Argo CD controller on the managed clusters. There are a few different ways to do that. Um, first, you can use OCM's policy template to generate that um, to each managed cluster. Or you can use what Dan Garfield just demoed this morning. Um, <laughs> thanks for coming. Uh, that you can use Argos of Argos to install those operators on, the, on each managed clusters. 
So there are different approaches that you can perform. And then our city controller will see those applications and perform local cluster deployment. So why do we um, want to do this? Uh, it does provide a few advantages. The first one is that it's going to scale better. Um, we do have some uh, skill tasks that's just going to cover shortly. And we also increase the security by no longer requiring the credential to be stored in a centralized location, which is a hub. Um, lastly, it's reducing the impact of a single point of centralized failure. So if your hub failed, you still have the application on your managed cluster and they can still perform local deployment. Um, now I'm going to pass over to Xiangjing for more details. Okay, so uh, here uh, we can see uh, this is the whole Argo City uh, Promodo architecture. Uh, so uh, that uh, looks uh, very uh, complicated. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of uh, workflows, but uh, let me uh, try to uh, break down uh, into uh, three uh, major parts. Uh, the first one is uh, located here. So uh, we call it a uh, propagation. And actually uh, we have the local propagation and the remote propagation. I will uh, talk about it uh, in, in detail uh, later uh, in next slides. But before that, uh, I just want to highlight uh, the purpose of this uh, propagation is to deploy the Argo CD applications to the managed classes. So uh, we are not uh, deploying the resources uh, to the uh, remote classes. We just uh, deployed uh, the Argo CD application templates to every uh, managed classes that our uh, placement decisions already selected. And uh, uh, this is the first uh, major uh, components located here. And uh, the second um, part uh, is the local uh, deployment. So once uh, the Argo CD application is uh, deployed on each of the managed clusters here, and then uh, the native Argo CD application controller will be reconciled. It will be uh, pool resources uh, from the Git repo and Helm repo, and it, it will also uh, deploy the resources, but just for this uh, given uh, managed cluster. So uh, they're not talking to uh, all, all the other managed cluster. So as Maggie uh, just mentioned, so one managed cluster, we have just the one Argo CD uh, instance running on that managed cluster. And uh, see here, uh, the last uh, major uh, uh, components uh, that's uh, uh, showed here. So uh, that's uh, all of these uh, components that they are uh, just uh, for uh, one goal. So uh, after we uh, deploy all the Argo CD applications uh, to all uh, managed clusters, and then uh, we need to find a way uh, to uh, fetch uh, the Argo CD application status from uh, all the managed clusters. And then uh, we collect it uh, into the uh, database, and then uh, we have some uh, aggregation controller finally to aggregate all the status, including the overall status and uh, the uh, per cluster condition status. And then we combine them the, into uh, one uh, final uh, resource. That's the, the new CRD uh, we introduced in the pool model. We call it a multi-cluster application set uh, report. So here, so that's also uh, located uh, in the uh, original Argo CD application set that the user created. Okay, so uh, let's uh, talk about uh, some details uh, in uh, each of the major uh, workflow. So uh, the first one is the two uh, propagations. So uh, here is, the, so the user, uh, firstly, uh, they uh, create the Argo CD application set uh, in a, a hub, a namespace, and then uh, at this point, uh, the Argo CD application set controller will be uh, reconciled uh, to do this uh, local propagation. So uh, this is the total uh, functionality uh, provided by the Argo CD. So uh, we're not on it. So after this uh, propagation, then uh, we can see, uh, let's see uh, if uh, the uh, cluster's uh, numbers is the 1000s, then uh, this uh, native Argo CD application set controller will be creating a 1000s Argo CD application uh, templates into the same namespace. And, uh, and, and then uh, here, uh, the second uh, propagation uh, is owned by us. We introduced a new uh, controller. Uh, we call it a propagation controller. So that will be a reconciled to do the further uh, propagation. We call it a remote uh, propagation uh, to uh, propagate these uh, Argo CD application templates from the hub to a given uh, managed classes by using our uh, manifest work uh, API. Um, so uh, the idea is that so, uh, using uh, this uh, manifest work, then uh, we are able to uh, specify a cluster namespace that we want to uh, deploy a specific uh, workflow uh, to the, this uh, given uh, managed cluster. So here, uh, let me uh, 
show you uh, some uh, details. So uh, hopefully uh, you can see it clearly. Um, see, uh, this is the uh, one sample uh, for this uh, manifest work. Uh, that's actually uh, supported by our uh, open cluster management uh, uh, community. Um, see here are uh, two highlights. One is the namespace. So uh, this namespace is actually uh, the cluster namespace. So as Maggie uh, just uh, uh, introduced uh, in the uh, OpenShift cluster uh, management uh, introduction, uh, then uh, every uh, managed cluster, uh, we have a cluster namespace created on the hub. So uh, if uh, you want to uh, deploy uh, something uh, to that uh, managed cluster, then uh, you have to uh, create a manifest work here uh, to specify uh, the cluster namespace. And uh, see, uh, under the uh, uh, spec, the, we have uh, two uh, major sections. The first section is the uh, manifest uh, configs. And actually, uh, we're defining uh, some uh, feedback uh, rules here. So the purpose is, uh, so once the Argo CD applications is uh, deployed to the managed cluster, then uh, we're hoping uh, to fetch some of the uh, status from that uh, application status uh, from the um, ma a managed cluster. So here, by using uh, these uh, feedback rules, then uh, we're able to uh, define it using the JSON path. See, as you can see here, so uh, we are actually um, fetching uh, two uh, status. One is the health status, the other is the sync status. So those are the overall status uh, reported by the Argo CD application status. Um, yeah. This is the first uh, section. And uh, the second uh, section uh, is the workload. So that means that this is uh, used uh, by the uh, manifest work. Then uh, the, we will uh, define uh, which uh, manifest we want this uh, manifest work to deploy uh, to the uh, managed cluster. So as you can see here, uh, this uh, manifest, uh, that's actually a original uh, Argo CD application uh, template here. So uh, there's the, uh, nothing uh, special here. But uh, one thing I just want to highlight here, because uh, the pool model, uh, we actually are leveraging uh, the Argo CD uh, instance that running on each uh, managed cluster uh, to uh, do this uh, local deployment. So the destination here that it has to be the local uh, built-in uh, server uh, URL. Uh, that's uh, provided by the Argo CD. So uh, you, if you are familiar uh, uh, with uh, Argo CD, then uh, so, uh, you probably already uh, see uh, this uh, server URL for multiple times. Okay, so uh, once this uh, Argo CD application is uh, deployed to the given a uh, managed cluster, then uh, the next uh, step is uh, totally owned by the native Argo CD applications. So uh, we're not on it. So uh, we just deliver uh, the Argo CD application template to the managed cluster, then uh, the Argo CD application controller will be reconciled to uh, pull resources from the Git repo, Helm repo, and then uh, do all the local uh, deployment, but just on that uh, managed cluster. And they have all the uh, status reported on that managed cluster either. Okay, so uh, the, the last uh, major part is, okay, so uh, once we have all of these uh, application deployed and um, on all the uh, managed clusters, and uh, the next step is that we need to find a way uh, to collect uh, all of these uh, multi-cluster application status uh, from all the managed clusters. So here, uh, we actually have uh, three uh, major components uh, to, to support this uh, status collection and aggregation. So uh, the first one is, uh, so uh, we are leveraging our OCM uh, search component. So uh, each uh, search uh, collector is uh, running as an agent on each uh, managed cluster that's uh, managed by our OCM uh, uh, components. So uh, it's able to uh, collect all the Argo CD application status from the uh, uh, from uh, each uh, managed cluster. And then uh, it save all of these uh, status to the uh, search uh, Postgres uh, database uh, running on the uh, hub cluster and uh, for the uh, later uh, query. And then uh, the second component is the resource uh, sync uh, controller. So uh, that's uh, provided by our pro, uh, pool model uh, components. So uh, we are actually running uh, periodically a search query uh, for fetching uh, the resources list and uh, the possible uh, error conditions from all the uh, Argo CD application uh, deployed on all managed clusters. Um, yeah, 
And uh, uh, the third uh, components uh, we are uh, using here is the, uh, the aggregation controller. So I just want to uh, mention that uh, these are uh, aggregation controller and the resource sync controller. So uh, they're all running uh, in the same uh, pause as the sidecar uh, container. So the reason is that so once uh, the resource sync controller is able to fetch uh, the application status, and then uh, it's generate an uh, intermediate uh, layer uh, of this uh, status into a YAML format uh, files into these uh, shared uh, volumes uh, in the pod. Then uh, these uh, shared volumes uh, will be uh, picked up by the aggregation controller. So uh, from here, uh, see the, uh, this uh, aggregation controller is also uh, combined uh, two uh, status. So uh, it's actually a fetch the overall status. Uh, from the manifest work, so I just uh, uh, showed it. So uh, we uh, uh, specify uh, the JSON uh, pass uh, for fetch the overall status, including the health status and uh, the sync uh, status. Um, and uh, uh, the second one is uh, so uh, it's also able to uh, fetch uh, the per cluster condition uh, status from this uh, intermediate uh, YAML output. And then uh, finally, uh, by combining uh, all of these uh, informations, so uh, we're able to uh, generate a final uh, multi-cluster application set uh, report CR into the same uh, application set uh, namespace. So yeah, this is the, uh, the how the application status collection and aggregation uh, uh, works here. So here, I also uh, post a YAML um, file here uh, for the reference seed here. Uh, as I uh, just mentioned, so uh, our uh, resource sync uh, controller uh, is used uh, to uh, fetch all the uh, cluster uh, conditions uh, from all the uh, managed clusters by using the search uh, components. Then uh, we will uh, generate this uh, YAML format uh, result into the shared volume uh, in the uh, pod. So uh, one application set is actually uh, have uh, one uh, YAML uh, format uh, Output here. See here is that the first session is that we can we are able to get this resource list from the first application uh, we deployed to the first uh, um, uh, managed cluster, and also uh, we have uh, all the uh, cluster uh, conditions. So uh, we have the cluster name and we have the uh, sync uh, status, health status. Uh, so uh, these are sync status and health status uh, they are empty because uh, we will uh, use uh, the manifest work uh, to get this uh, overall sync status and health status. So, but here uh, we also have this uh, conditional list. So that will be uh, used for reporting any possible error conditions that this uh, application uh, could have. So uh, if uh, there's uh, no error uh, conditions, then uh, this uh, conditional list will be uh, empty. Okay, so I think uh, those are the uh, some of the uh, instructions for this uh, architecture uh, overview. Okay, so uh, let's talk about some uh, prerequisites uh, to be able to use this uh, per model. So uh, we actually have four prerequisites, but uh, uh, I just want to say so, uh, those are all almost all of these prerequisites, uh, they are required by the Argo CD. So uh, in order to uh, use the poor model, then uh, we have to follow the Argo CD way uh, to set up uh, these uh, conditions uh, correctly. So uh, the first one is, uh, so we need to uh, install uh, the Argo CD operator or the OpenShift uh, GitHub operator. So uh, they're actually uh, the same thing. And uh, this uh, OpenShift uh, uh, GitOps operator uh, that's are running on the hub and on uh, all the uh, managed clusters. And it has to be uh, installed in this uh, fixed uh, namespace, the OpenShift uh, GitOps. Uh, the second uh, prerequisite uh, is the, on the hub uh, cluster. So uh, we have to uh, import all the managed cluster secret to the OpenShift uh, GitOps uh, namespace. So that's also uh, required by the application set controller because uh, if uh, there's uh, no uh, cluster uh, secret located in the uh, Argo CD uh, name, uh, server namespace, then uh, this uh, managed uh, cluster won't be uh, identified by the application set controller. So uh, the first uh, local propagation uh, will fail. So it won't be uh, propagated uh, the Argo CD applications to, to that managed cluster if, uh, 
it's not, uh, uh, there's no such uh, cluster secret in the namespace. Okay, and uh, the third one is uh, the, so uh, this is also uh, required by the uh, Argo CD application controller. So uh, right now, uh, if uh, we want to uh, deploy uh, something uh, to the managed clusters into a specific namespace, then uh, we have to uh, set up this uh, particular label to let uh, this uh, namespace uh, managed by the uh, application uh, controller. Otherwise, uh, so uh, there's uh, no uh, RBAC uh, uh, control, so all the deployment will fail. Okay, then uh, let me uh, go back to Maggie uh, to talk about uh, the other uh, prerequisite. Yeah, um, so actually like it's part, uh, so I just want to say that um, we do have constant meetings with our city community, uh, we attend their uh, meetings quite frequently, we propose and we have PRs and we have iterations of PRs. So um, it's currently in the official Argo CD documentation and you can find the use of it uh, that um, it's specifically for open cluster management with the pool integration. So you will need to have the skip reconcile to perform the pool model um, on the application. So now I'm going to show you an actual, oh sorry, I think someone was taking a picture. Sorry for um, injecting. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the official demo. Um, it's also a recording because I don't want to um, show something um, surprisingly. But um, before I click on the play, I just want to point out that we have the terminal. Okay, I can't enlarge it. So essentially, um, we have the terminal for the hub and two managed cluster. So I'm going to um, perform the application side deployment on the hub cluster. So now I'm listing the managed clusters and you can see I have demo zero, demo one, and my local cluster. I am now applying the application set itself and you can see the placement and applications that are created successfully. Let's take a look at the application set itself. Um, so let me scroll up and pause right here. So you can see that I am using a placement called BGDK app placement um, that selects the demo manage zero and demo manage one. I'm going to show you the placement shortly. But I do want to point out under the metadata annotations, there are some OCM specific uh, labels. So such as the OCM managed cluster that's going to inject the managed cluster name. Um, OCM managed cluster app namespace, which was the one we defined. Um, as well as the script reconcile, and you can find more documentation on it on the official argue doc. So now if I, um, oh, aside from that, you can see the other spec, like destination projects, which are just what you would usually create application set. Um, we didn't do much variations on this spec. And let's take a look at the placement. So for this placement, I didn't use AWS. I'm using environment to demo. And you can see I'm using the global cluster set and I have two clusters selected. And um, it's also reflected under the status. Um, in terms of the placement decision, you can see I do have a list of decisions which shows my um, two cluster names. Um, now let's take a look at the application and you can see they are deployed on the hub, but our actual uh, managed cluster deployment are not from the hub we are going to have an application on each managed cluster itself. And you can see that they are created by OCM's um, propagation operator. So um, resources are also deployed. You can see the replica set deployment, everything was in a healthy state and, um, and including route as well. So let's take a look at the application YAML itself. Um, it's the same Argo, Argo application template um, it has a list of resources and um, what the status of those are. They are all healthy, which is great. Um, and on the hub cluster, let's verify those status by OCM's multi-cluster application set report. So this is a resource that's created by OCM. And you can see that we do have a list of resources and under the cluster status, they are all healthy. Um, resources are listed here and we have this overall status. Um, by saying we have two clusters selected and both of them are healthy and they're all synced. Um, so that's the success route. Um, I mean, in general, you would have progressing stock or actually failed status. So I do want to show you that. Um, so now I am deploying an application set that's going to get stuck. 
So you can see it's actually um, in a sync state and progressing on the managed cluster. So take a look at the application on the managed cluster. Um, it should go into reflect what you just saw. So even though some of the resources are synced, you can see we have certain resources that stock in a progressing state and we do have them, um, the messages. They are waiting for some rollouts and um, they will never end because we intentionally made them to wait for something. So we do want to make sure the multi-cluster application set report also get reflected. And as you can see under the summary, we now have two clusters. None of them are healthy and they are always in progress. So if you so scroll up, um, you still have you know, a list of resources listed, um, but the health status are now stuck in progressing. They're still in sync, so that's a good portion. Oh, by the way, all of the applications are using the same placement, so they are both deploying to the two, um, two managed clusters. So now I am applying the third application, which is going to fail. On one of the managed clusters, I just want to verify that they failed which is the case, it's no longer in sync. It's now um, missing health status and it's out of sync. So on the application itself, you can see that um, if you scroll up, their health status are in missing state and they are out of sync. Um, I do want to point out that one limitation we have is that even though those resources failed, they ideally they should still get reflected on our hub, which is the multi-cluster application set report, but that's not the case. Um, so if you look at the resource list, we only have a service client, which is not true because um, you can see that we have deployment that failed. Um, so that's one of our limitations slash bug that we should enhance. So I just want to point that out. But aside from that, we have not healthy and not sync status, which um, is true. So under the condition, we also have those failed messages reflected from the managed cluster to the hub cluster. Um, that's pretty much it for my demo portion. So let me go ahead and discuss the limitations. So I already covered the number two, which is that we should have all of the resources from the managed cluster to the hub, which didn't happen nowadays for the fail state. Um, one, another limitation we have is that um, resources are only deployed on the managed clusters. So with the pool model, they're not deployed on the hub cluster. And lastly, in the pool model, we are excluding the local cluster as a target managed cluster. Um, so there are a lot of different ways to reach us if you're interested in the pool model or want to enhance the pool model. Um, so we have the GitHub page, we have website and docs. If you want to interact and reach us, we have Slack channel, YouTube channel, mailing group, and community meetings. Um, you can also reach us on LinkedIn if you're interested as well. Um, John, do you okay. want to tell us? about the okay, yeah. skill test. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, I, I just want to mention uh, there is, uh, so as Maggie uh, just mentioned, so, uh, there are some uh, limitations that we already identified. And uh, that's partially uh, because uh, the limitations for our search component and our uh, manifest work uh, uh, limitations. Uh, Firstly, so right now uh, our uh, manifest work uh, is the uh, feedback rules uh, as I just uh, demoed. So it's only uh, supported to fetch in the string uh, data type. So uh, it's not supported to uh, fetch uh, the list uh, data type. So that's why uh, we have to uh, rely on the search components uh, to uh, collect those uh, uh, list uh, uh, resources and the list of the error conditions. But uh, the search uh, components, so uh, one of the major things is that it has to be uh, find uh, all the resources that actually are deployed on the uh, managed clusters, uh, which means that it has to uh, have uh, the uh, UID. Otherwise, uh, those uh, 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 field uh, resources won't be uh, fetched by the search collector. So with these uh, two uh, limitations that uh, we identify it, and uh, we actually uh, have a roadmap uh, plan uh, that's uh, under uh, the uh, consideration. So I just want to uh, share it here uh, for you guys. So uh, our uh, manifest work, uh, we'll, uh, we, we already have a proposal uh, to uh, enhance our uh, manifest work API. So uh, by that way, then uh, the manifest work will be able to uh, fetch uh, the list of data as a uh, raw uh, JSON. So uh, with that way, then we just need uh, to fetch all the overall status and uh, the, product, uh, the uh, 
per cluster uh, condition status from the managed clusters by uh, fetching uh, the uh, status from the manifest work uh, status uh, directly. Then uh, if uh, that is uh, ready, then uh, we probably uh, will uh, drop all of these uh, search uh, components uh, dependency uh, in the future uh, releases. So that will uh, provide us uh, more uh, efficiency. Uh, uh, the other one is uh, I just want to uh, spend maybe uh, uh, 30 minutes uh, uh, to talk about uh, some of the uh, performance uh, uh, tests. So uh, that's still on the way, so uh, we're not finished, but uh, we just want to prove that this uh, advantage of the scalability uh, by using this uh, poor model. So actually, uh, so uh, we uh, run uh, this case, we actually um, deployed uh, 20, oh, uh, before that, so I just want to uh, share uh, two numbers that our, uh, thanks to our uh, GitOps, uh, OpenShift uh, GitOps uh, operator uh, team. So uh, they actually uh, talk about two numbers that, that uh, right now uh, the native uh, Argo CD uh, they have. The first one is the total numbers of the application that they can uh, control. So they found that once uh, the numbers of applications are using the push model is over uh, 1,000, the whole uh, Argo CD application UI uh, will have some performance issue, so uh, they're not stable. And uh, the second number is, uh, so uh, they found that once uh, one uh, Argo CD uh, instance, they are uh, uh, deploying resources to over uh, 100 clusters, so they also uh, hit some uh, performance uh, uh, issue. So uh, here, uh, we uh, already uh, run some uh, performance tests using this support model, and our uh, scenario is, uh, so uh, we deployed uh, 20 uh, application sets, to uh, 500 uh, managed clusters. So the total uh, numbers of applications that would be the, uh, the 10,000 uh, applications uh, in total. So uh, within uh, two and a half minutes, then uh, we get all the uh, managed clusters reported in our final uh, multi-cluster uh, application set report. So those are the uh, rough um, uh, performance uh, status I want to share here. Okay, so that's uh, Thanks. Any other uh, questions? <laughs> Uh, hi. Can you, yep. Uh, <laughs> um, I saw in the demo for the application set deployment that you had an annotation for targeting a managed cluster. Um, if you don't use that annotation, are you basically saying, I want it to just go to all managed clusters, or is there a way to have an application set just go to auto all managed clusters by default? Yeah, yeah, like if you does not specify the predicates, it's just going to use a cluster set, um, which is the global cluster set that's going to deploy to all clusters. Got so it. it's just like if you want to select a set of the cluster, that will be the way, but you can definitely have the choice to deploy to all clusters. Right, uh, Thank you. so uh, may maybe uh, to be uh, more specific, oh, sorry. Yeah, we can be <laughs> Yeah, it's essentially you can delete everything under the spec, to be honest. And you can also delete everything under the predicates. It's just an option for you to narrow down the list. Thank you. No problem. So on a scale of one to 10, where one is your pre-alpha and 10 this is in production and it's bulletproof, where would you put uh, OCM? Or another, another question is, do you have customers that are using it today in production? I think we... Do we have any like in real customer? I think it's still under development, and that's why we want to be here to you know raise some awareness. Um, so we are going to develop more um, in next release, but this is I would say an alpha state. Yeah. And you can see we have a lot of prerequisites, which is not ideal. And I am looking forward to collaborate with Algo more, so that maybe we can reduce the number of prerequisites to you know maybe just one. Okay, thank you. Right, and uh, so uh, for this uh, poor model of, of features, so, uh, we are planning uh, to release it uh, in our uh, downstream uh, pro uh, project called ACM. Uh, uh, that will be uh, released uh, in this June, so yeah, uh, in uh, 2.8. So uh, that will be uh, published uh, along with that uh, release in June. Uh, is there any question? If not, I think, uh, thanks everyone for joining. We are looking forward to see more contributions in the future. And thanks, Argo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>